Hi and welcome to a new episode of Holistic Stroke Solutions. In this episode we're going to discuss probably one of the most underutilized techniques in stroke rehabilitation to re-engage the affected hemisphere. Quadrupedal exercises. It is probably the thing you're missing in your training and rehabilitation and it is, as I will explain why, the go-to exercise to re-engage the affected hemisphere that is suppressed after a stroke. So, what we will discuss in this episode is that what happens after a stroke and how the unaffected hemisphere takes over the show gets dominant and suppresses the already affected parts even further. So we're going to go into how that works, why it's so hugely important, and then we're going into part two in how we can utilize inbuilt movement patterns in our spine, spinal cord, brainstem, cerebellum, and the communication between the two hemispheres, how we can utilize a new type or a type of exercise that re-engages the affected suppressed parts of the brain. Now, let's go back what happens after a stroke. Well, first of all, we have talked about in other episodes that we have to uh, remember that there is neuroinflammation, the immune system of the brain that starts to clear, repair, reconstruct the parts that are affected, which in itself makes it harder to do a lot of rehabilitation because it usually makes you a little bit more tired, lethargic, you can have a little bit more brain fog, things are a little bit chaotic in the beginning, but one, once uh, the immune system uh, starts to settle down again, we are ready for a lot of rehabilitation. And of course, rehabilitation during the first weeks and months is hugely important. When the immune system settles down, you can do more. Now, in this period, what happens? The brain is really smart. The brain wants you to survive, yeah, based uh, on uh, oxygen, nutrition, and activation. And when parts of the brain start to dysfunction, the good parts start to take over. What I mean with that, the brain thinks, okay, if I cannot do it in this way, if I cannot use the brain parts, whether that's up here uh, due to a middle cerebral artery stroke, or whether it's lower down in the system, in the brain stem or the cerebellum, the brain starts to emphasize the areas that are still functioning. And this is a huge concept. There's a lot of literature around that is showing that after a stroke the good parts of the brain especially the opposite parts start to function at a higher level and they start to take over some parts on the affected side will also uh, have little heightened function in in order to compensate for what's going on but what is a known fact is that the parts of the brain that uh, steer the motorics becomes enhanced and even when you attempt to retrain function on the affected side so for example we have a stroke in the right hemisphere it affects the motor output which is 10 percent remember the 10 percent of the output of the motor areas of the brain to the opposite side then you still see that when you are attempting to train this side that you affect the ipsilateral, the brain on the same side that is still intact, it starts to recover function on the same side. This is a hugely important concept. So that means that when you are only training, and there's a lot of benefit from just training the affected side, we know that, you know, if you do intense training that it will have an effect, but it's not necessarily re-engaging the affected parts, it's actually re-engaging the already good side of the brain. And the more this gets trained, the stronger it gets, and it sends an uh, inhibitory signal to the other side, so it suppresses the already affected side even more. So this is a huge paradox 
in rehabilitation and that's why I think this is probably one of the most important episodes that we have made so far because you have to understand that this happens and when you understand this you can start doing something with it. So we know that even if you're training on the affected side you will still engage the good parts of the brain the most and it will make it more difficult to reuse or start to relearn to use the affected sites from what is possible. Now, you have to also understand is and how we how can we solve this? And it is not by doing more on the affected side and this is also why we are in this loop where you get stuck that you start to uh, compensate for the movements on the left side. You never relearn it as good as you want to because you're mo using the uh, not the most efficient parts of the brain because this part of the brain has an effect on the same side. In fact, 90% of its output is directed down to the brainstem, to the reticular uh, pontomedullary reticular formation where autonomics are regulated where muscle tone it gets up and down regulated so you do have an effect on the same side that is why training the arm even if it affects the uh, ipsilateral brain will have an effect but it's not the effect that you want you want the effect from the affected part and related brain areas now how can we circumnavigate it. It's not through doing more exercises on the affected side. We have to do something smarter. What we already shared with you is that in the brainstem and in the spinal cord and in the cerebellum, which are usually not affected, and even if they are affected, there are other areas in the central nerve system where you have patterns built in from birth or patterns that develop very strong after birth that you can utilize to bypass this. So what do I mean with this? The patterns that we uh, have built in make sure that the two sides, the two arms, the two legs and the arms and the legs are interconnected. Meaning that once we start moving, for example, in crawling patterns, uh, walking is a very good example of a quadrupedal exercise swimming or uh, standing on all fours, uh, creeping, crawling, those things activate these already existing patterns. But now this is where the beauty comes in. These type of movements, even if they may be hard after a stroke, they force the two hemispheres to start communicating with each other. Because you cannot, when you do alternating movements on both sides, you cannot just utilize the already um, highly efficient good parts of the brain. You are start to alternate. So you get a inhibition and disinhibition pattern. We disinhibit, and this is like when you search for this, you disinhibit the affected parts when you start alternating movements. And that those alternating movements, because it is crawling, it's walking, you have a lot of them. So you cannot keep up with this brain in just making one purposeful movement. When you use these naturally natural movement patterns, you start to have a crosstalk between the two hemispheres. And this is the way to overcome that the already good working parts of the brain take over. So this is also why we see that in our client population this is the type of exercise when we do this we unlock more potential and we get people even years after stroke to make suddenly make process except for it is not suddenly it's just being smart use, use, uh, utilizing inbuilt movement patterns that force the brain to start communicating and this is why we know and in the literature there's a lot of uh, theoretical evidence for this also that these quadrupedal movements are essential if you want to get 
more out of your stroke rehabilitation. This is also why we, this is also the reason why we do not make videos every week because we are busy developing these training methods and machines that you can utilize in a home situation to do these exercises with. But just know that we, this, these for us are the go-to exercises. If you get stuck, you go back to these exercises, which made total sense because it is how you developed your brain in the first place. You go back to basics, back to the floor, on your back like a baby starting to randomly move which is like a, a, a buck on the floor trying to move that's why we call it that buck exercises often you can do it start statically and then move even if it is with three limbs in stages to that you can start moving in a natural way on the back then roll over start to crawl and creep on the front and progress on the knees and hands to standing, walking. Arm swing is an extremely good example of also engaging these inbuilt uh, networks. And from there, we st we, w because we have a lot of repetition, because these are typically movements that you can do a lot more than just using the fingers. Um, we get high amounts of repetition, big neuroplasticity we do the right things because we we disinhibit we free up the capacity of the affected sites uh, parts of the brain and that is where the magic starts to happen so my recommendation is uh, this should be your go-to type of exercise when you get stuck in your training or progress after a stroke now, having said that, I also realize, and this is the reason why we develop training methods and uh, build equipment to do these exercises in exactly the right way, that it's very hard after a stroke to engage in these exercises because your spasticity, your lack of control of the affected site sometimes make it almost impossible. But I can promise you, if you allow yourself to even start with the tiniest of movements and you keep repeating that your body will remember that it has these patterns built in and we almost see without exception that you can start getting bigger and bigger movements where your whole body starts to engage and you can start to work in synchrony you start not only to work the arms and legs but you also start to work the uh, upper centers where the hemispheres start to communicate and that's where i end this episode highly recommended i think this is the most powerful thing i have come across uh, other than that you have to exercise um, we'll have to think hard on a good topic for the next videos if you want to learn more about this go to the links below the video and uh, learn more more about how you can use this quadrupedal exercises either with equipment either in training methods uh, i see you in the next video if you have not already done so please subscribe to our channel so you get updates on when new episodes appear thank you so much bye